Okay, here we go, folks. Um, what we got here, this is a Murray 19 inch deck with a Briggs & Stratton 5.5 liter L head engine, flat head engine, same thing. Um, here's a story with this thing. Uh, this belongs to a farm not too far from me. I've volunteered out a few times and it's been sitting there since the first time I volunteered and I asked the owner, I said, hey, what's going on with this thing? He said, well, I was using it, but it just doesn't work anymore. So uh, I'm assuming you're here at this channel because you want to learn about how to, we're going to fix this, uh, what we need to look at when we have a lawnmower that's not working. You picked it up at a garage sale for free or an ad for free or whatever, and it's not quite working right. We want to see if we can get it working right. So. Uh, we're going to go through a few checks that are really important on this and then we're going to do a little cleanup on this it needs a little loving it needs oil change it needs some tires um, that, to be uh, tightened up a little bit it needs some stuff for the handle it needs needs a lot of love so uh, let's go ahead and get started now the very first thing i like to begin with is just to see what's going on does the motor actually spin does it turn is there any compression on this so what i will do typically is just kind of pull the handle here see if i feel anything uh, if i can't pull it or if it's really tight i know there might be an issue uh, i'm feeling something there uh, the other thing is i want to just turn the blade but please 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 always 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 make sure that the spark plug is disconnected before you reach under here and we can tip this up and give this a spin. Now, before, I'll show you the bottom of the deck here. Before, this was just caked full of stuff. So I don't know if that had something to do with it before where it was just bound up with a bunch of just stuff underneath the deck. It's very possible. Um, it's moving okay now. And I'm feeling a little bit of resistance, which is good. That's our compression. So let's talk about those four things that we're going to need. So when we're dealing with any type of gasoline engine, we need four things. We need air, we need our fuel, which is gasoline, we need a spark, and we need compression. We don't have those four or a missing one. This motor is not going to run. So what I like to do is start with our compression first. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just take out the spark plug and see if we have any compression. Now, any, again, anytime we're working on the engine, we want to make sure our, our boot is disconnected. Now, it wouldn't start because this, with this bar down, that's going to short everything out and it's going to apply a brake to the engine. So it shouldn't start, but just for extra insurance, we're going to make sure we have our spark plug disconnected before we try to do anything on our engine. Uh, you also need to get the right spark plug socket. I see a lot of people using just regular sockets. Uh, a spark plug socket has a special boot in here. It's going to protect our porcelain and we don't have to worry about it breaking or cracking. We get a crack in our porcelain and it's going to ruin our spark plug. So that's going to help us take it off and uh, make sure it's okay. Now, I always want to check the condition of this and you can see I've got a little bit of, so close and get, keep that clear. I've got a little bit of carbon buildup in here and I want to make sure that that is all cleaned up. In fact, just with not knowing how old this spark plug is, what kind of condition it's in, whatever. Um, spark plugs are pretty cheap. They're like five bucks or less. So I'm going to go ahead and put a new spark plug in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this string, but in order to do that, I need to clamp my rod so that's out of the way so it can move freely. And I'm just going to put my finger over that spark plug hole and see what I can feel. And I feel a little bit of compression, so that's a good sign. Uh, but let's go ahead and actually check how much compression we actually have. Now it's a quick test with my finger if I'm just by the side of the road and I just want to take it off and check. And when I get home, I really want to use a compression gauge to check how much compression my cylinder is actually making on that compression stroke. And generally I like to see about 80 pounds. Now something you need to be aware of on most engines is on the cam, it will have some type of device that's going to help you start the motor and it's going to not really give you really good compression at first. So you, not, you may not get real good compression based on that little, that little lever or that little guy on the camshaft that's gonna make it easier to pull the cord. So sometimes you may have, uh, it may show low compression, um, but we're gonna go ahead and try this out and then we're gonna see what we get. Now I wanna pull this about six times now, we, before we do this, we want to make sure that we have good airflow getting in. So I'm going to take the air filter off. I haven't taken this off yet, but we'll check the air filter in a second. because That's really important too. Uh, 
A lot of lawnmowers have a choke on it. This particular one does not have a choke, but we want to make sure our throttle is all the way to the open position. And that way we're going to get a nice amount of airflow in here to actually do our check. We're going to pull the string about six times and see how much compression we can build up. So we are at about, you can see right here, see that uh, we're just about 80, I don't know, just below 85. And that's, that's pretty good. Um, sometimes it'll be even be like at 60, depending on that lever on the camshaft that makes it easier for the engine to start. Um, if it's lower than that, I'd probably be concerned, um, but that's looking pretty good here for our compression, okay? Now, I think the best method for checking your spark is to get this tool as spark plug tester to see what condition your spark's in. And what I like is I can adjust the gap here and then open this up or make it smaller. And it's got some labels here, right? SE, that means small engine, then 20,000 volts, 30,000 volts, 40,000 volts. But I just wanna get it in here and I'll try and come out a little bit to see how far I can get that spark to jump. I'm looking for a nice bright spark. I don't really want like a orange or, or a red or brown, it should be nice, bright, nice blue. This is what I'm looking for here. So let's go ahead and set this up and show you what that looks like. So you can see when I pull this, I got this nice bright white spark here, which is perfect, which is what I want. I can even just bring this back and see if I can get that to jump a little bit farther to see what kind of condition my armature and coil are in. So I really like this tool. You can use it on cars. You can use it in all kinds of things, but 10 bucks to check to see if your spark is good. I think that's good value. Now the final and main thing we need to check is our carburetor, obviously where we're delivering the air and fuel. And that's usually where 90% of our problems are is just carburetor and the fuel has been sitting in there and it's just not working right. Especially if a lawnmower has been sitting a long time. If I don't know what kind of condition it's in, I definitely want to just take it apart, clean it out, put it back together. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, what I like to do is just to kind of see what's going on. Um, I'm going to just take all this stuff off, the top cover and the fuel tank. This one's pretty easy. It's just two screws here. And then I got three bolts holding this on and a bolt here. Get that off and I'll show you why in a second. Now this way, I can let the tank rest down here. And when I go to take the carburetor off, all the fuel will run down into my tank and I don't have to worry about clamps. If you have a clamp, that's great. You can clamp off a fuel line, but if you don't, you can just let gravity do its work and all that fuel in the fuel line will go back down into the tank, which works out really great. Now, one thing we didn't talk about was the air filter before. So let's just check this. It doesn't look too bad. I always want to kind of check between the pleats. This one's actually pretty clean. We can still reuse that one. I'll kind of just blow it out. I'll get some fuzzies in here. That's pretty good. If it's full of oil, um, or if I just take these pleats and I kind of give them a tug, because sometimes it's been in there for years, literally. And sometimes these pleats, you'll just give them a tug and they'll tear. Um, these aren't tearing and they look pretty clean. So we're going to go ahead and reuse the uh, filter. That's in good shape. So I get this cover here. We got to take off the carburetor. So I got three bolts here. We're going to take off. Pop this forward. It's looking pretty good. Um, be careful. This gasket is pretty fragile, especially if it's been on here a while. I really don't want to touch it. We can reuse that. Uh, and now we got to get to these two bolts back here. What I like to do is get my camera and the linkage here. I want to take a picture of how this linkage goes on and where the spring is and how this all goes together. That way, if I got to wait a few days to put this back together. It's not a big deal. I can just go to my phone and look at that picture I took and see how all these linkages hook back up. So uh, first thing we're going to take our fuel line. We're just going to, this is usually a little spring clamp. We're just going to squeeze this with some pliers and pull this off. So needle nose usually work fine. 
or channel locks also work fine. I'm just gonna give that a squeeze and kind of just pull that down out of the way. And I'll just put my needle nose right on the side of the carburetor here and just give that a little pry. Again, this can be kind of soft, so don't get crazy with it. But I'm just gonna try and pry this off as best I can without damaging the hose if I can. Now, I've got two bolts. I got one here and one on the other side. Then we can take the whole carburetor off. So I'm gonna just tip this down. Put your finger over this though, because fuel will leak out when I tip this down. I'm just gonna hook this from here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try and dump that back into my fuel tank so I'm not wasting fuel. Um, it should be okay. If, if, again, if you don't know what kind of condition it's in, probably a good idea just to dump this uh, with some used oil and that should be fine. Now for this, you can spray it off. Um, I just like to take a, just a, doesn't even need to be a wire brush, just a regular brush. Just knock all the big chunks off like this. I'm gonna put it all right here with our fuel. We're gonna just put this all in one spot. Just we're gonna do some carb cleaning too, so. That's always already looking better. Um, that's looking all right. And then I don't need to get it super clean. I just want to knock most of this off before we open it up. So now we're going to find the right size for the nut down here. And we're going to go ahead and open our float up. Now we're going to go ahead and just take the bowl off because we're going to clean all the inside of this out real quick. It doesn't take very long. We just want to take a look and see what's going on inside. Now this nut on the bottom just is not a nut. It actually has a hole here that the fuel goes through right there and right there. It goes up the center there. So we're going to clean that out real good. Also make sure you don't lose this washer. That washer is important. We're going to put that right there. I'm going to take the bolt off, and this one came off pretty easy. Uh, I want to check my O-ring. Uh, this one looks okay. I might be able to reuse this one, or we might go get another carburetor kit. Carburetor kits aren't that much for this type of engine. Usually they're like five, ten bucks. Um, but this this might be okay, but we're going to go ahead and just take the rest apart and see what's going on. Now the float here, as that bowl fills up with fuel, it comes up and up and up and cuts off the fuel from the tank and when it gets a little low, carburetor is using that fuel, it'll drop down, allow more fuel in the bowl and then bring it back up. So this is regulating how much fuel is in the bowl. Um, if this is broken, usually I don't have a lot of problems with plastic, but sometimes you'll get old school ones that are made out of brass and they'll just fill up with fuel. I've seen that before, but plastic ones are pretty durable, but I've got a pin here. I slide that pin out, I take the bowl out and there's my needle. Don't lose that needle, you're gonna need that too. So one tool I really like using for carburetors that's not really designed for carburetors is this little torch tip cleaner. It's got these rods in here that are different diameters and this is gonna help me clean out all the different jets I've got. So I'm gonna pick which one I think will fit through here. We'll start with the nut down here and I'm gonna run this through and that's still a little bit too small. So we'll step it up to the next one. Give that a shot. You And you don't, you know, if it doesn't go, don't force it. I'm gonna try that one. Still a little too small. Go to the next one. Try that. And that one really doesn't, well, it barely fits. So that's perfect. So I'm gonna run that through a few times. And it doesn't fit through that one. That, that little hole is a little bit smaller. So we're gonna go with a, I'm gonna start with our small, well, we'll start with this one. It's like fourth smallest. We'll see if that fits. There we go, that's perfect. So I'm just gonna run that through, make sure that that hole is clear. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on our carburetor. I'm just gonna run this all the way through. Pick one that I think will fit. That's all you gotta do. You have to kind of experiment and play with it a little bit. I'm gonna run that right through that hole. It should go all the way up to the top of the carburetor. You can see in there. That one's still a little bit small, so I'm gonna step it up to the next one. Add a shot. That's good. And then we'll go. This is 
Actually, it's as big as we've got on this particular set. The, actually, the largest one does not fit. So that's fine. There we go. Actually, wrong hole. So that's fine. That's looking pretty good. So I really don't need to clean anything else out. I've got some small orifices here. This one looks like it's a little clogged. Because some of these jets are for fuel, some are for air. So I want to clean that one out. Looks like it's a little jammed up. We'll start with our smallest one here and see if that fits. Okay, and that goes through nicely. Go to the next one and see if that fits. Because this is what I really want to do first. Make sure there's any varnish or anything kind of gumming up these passages, either for air or fuel, that they're clear. So the last step is after I've gone through those jets with my wires, I'm gonna get some carbon choke spray. I'm gonna make sure I'm over my little bowl right here so everything leaks into here, I'm not getting on the ground. Uh, you want some safety glasses on in case this sprays back. You don't want it spraying in your eyes or anything like that, but I'm gonna just spray a little bit right in there. You don't need to go crazy with this stuff. I'm not even pushing all the way. I'm just getting it in there just to run some of that through there just to knock off any buildup or any residue inside of here. And that should do it. We should be ready to put this back together. Um, actually, let's, we're gonna run this through the jet here on the uh, bottom nut as well, just real quick. Make sure that's cleaned out. It's not a bad idea to wear gloves while you're doing this too, so you don't destroy your hands. That's really all we need. We don't need to get super crazy um, with this. Now we can go ahead and put it back together. So with our carburetor all cleaned up, it's time to put it together. Now again, this O-ring, it's a little questionable. I'm gonna go ahead and try and put it back together. But again, it's always good just to go ahead and get a rebuild kit and just get all the parts and pieces you need. It'll come usually with this O-ring. Sometimes you can just buy this O-ring separate and that usually works out pretty well. But that's the only thing that's I'm kind of questioning right now, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. So I'm going to take my needle valve and just slip that right into there, into my float and drop that into place. Then I'm just gonna take my pin right here and slip that in. And you just want it equal parts on either side. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure is that this just goes down this far. It's flush. Or you can go like this. And I just want to make sure that it kind of just stops there and is level with the rest of the carburetor. So now I'll go ahead and put the bowl on. Make sure it seats on there right. And then you want your nut with the washer. Don't forget that washer. Super important. And just screw this back together. And a couple things we can do just even right now. One, make sure that there is an O-ring right here on the engine. Make sure that O-ring is there because if it's not there, if it falls off, it's cracked, um, it's not gonna seal well and we're gonna not get the right mixture of air and fuel into our engine. Another thing you can do just to make sure that our carburetor is not leaking is we're just gonna hook up our fuel line here to our carburetor. Carburetor. And I'm just gonna let that fill up. And what should happen is that float should just kind of keep that um, fuel at the right level. And if there is a leak, I'm gonna tip that a little bit. If there is a leak through that O-ring, I should be seeing that right now. I don't see anything. I think we're gonna be we're gonna be okay. But that's one thing I that's one thing I like about taking this off. Is I can do a real quick check on this real quick without having to screw everything back on, tighten it up, put the gas tank back on, then go. Oh crap! It's not working. Right. So I can just do a real quick check, and now I can kind of confirm that I don't have any leaks here, and then I can go ahead and reinstall my carburetor. Now I'm gonna put my finger over that hole because I do have fuel in here. 
I'm just going to connect my rod here. This is for our governor. Just get that on there real quick and uh, bolt it up. So one, one thing we need to do is look at the underside, look at the undercarriage here, and what you will notice, and I've already looked at this already, is we got a lot of stuff, a lot of junk under here. It's just all built up. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is take, just take a scraper and get most of that out. The other thing I noticed is this blade, look at this. You'll notice right here, I can fit like one finger here. And you'll notice, I'm, I'm missing a little bit. I'm missing a little bit there. So blade goes to here on one side, it goes to here on the other side. And that's, that's really, really bad news. Um, I got a blade like that. What well, one, I, I can't, this, this can't be resharpened. It's gotta be trash. We can put it in the forge and make something out of it, make a knife out of it. I don't know. Uh, but I gotta re replace this with a brand new blade because if I run this, even if I try and sharpen it, I gotta take a bunch of material off so it's balanced on either side. Because if I try and run this, it's gonna throw my drive shaft way out of alignment, can damage my engine if I try and run it. It's probably gonna run like crap even though it will run with this bleed on it as it is. That's just way too much. So we're gonna put a fresh blade on here and clean up all this crap. But the best way to do this is just like a wire brush like this. This one has like a little scraper on it. And I'm not gonna get crazy with this. You can see, it's gonna get most of that out of there. And what the scraper, the scraper doesn't get, that wire brush will get. So that makes it real nice. So we can work on that and get most of that debris out of there. All right, so we're gonna change out our blade here and uh, I would recommend to use like a glove or a towel to grab the blade and make sure you have a wrench with a longer handle. You have a short handle like this. It's really gonna be hard to get off. This might even be too small. I want something a little bit longer, um, but I'm just gonna get in here and I'm going to go towards the left or counterclockwise and just spin this bolt off. So you can see here, not so good. There's no sharp edge on this. It's all torn up. Is that, wow. Okay, and this is what I'm also concerned about is I've got little cracks right here in the blade itself. Um, and that gets thrown under the deck or something. That, that could be really dangerous. I mean, I can't bend it with my finger very well, but I keep using it and I get these cracks like this. This now turns into shrapnel and that's, it's not a good deal. So uh, with our new blade, it comes with a standard opening like this because some accept like an opening like this where it locks into these little keyways right here. Otherwise I've got these little guys that will fit into that center opening and I just need to find the right one for my bolt. And that one is just right. All right. I'm going to use this washer instead I know it's gonna raise the blade up a little bit, but that'll be okay. And then this, it may not fit great right now. You might have to like get a hammer and knock it in a little bit, but this is just a press fit. And that's actually gonna be fine, just like that, because that's gonna give us that exact diameter that we need. Now, <laughs> the next thing is, make sure you install this the right way. I've seen it several times. Uh, where I've had a blade installed upside down when I flipped the mower. So the blade, 
the, the, the fin part right here will always go towards the deck. The blade is always gonna go towards the bottom. So you always wanna make sure that when you put this on, that the blade is facing this way and that fin on the opposite side is facing the other way. Otherwise, you're really gonna mess up, especially if you're using this for lawn. He's not using this for a lawn, um, but if you are, it's really gonna mess things up. So this doesn't, doesn't wanna stay in very nicely. I'm just gonna go like that. And also always, I always want to check this to make sure that I'm not going to hit the deck somewhere where maybe the deck got bent or this got bent because that blade, right? This blade is so short that who knows what's going on under here. So I always want to do this by hand and just check it, make sure I'm not going to hit anything. And that's looking pretty good. And obviously if you're just changing out the blade, you always again want to take out our spark plug. Our spark plug is still out from what we've done before but you always want to take that spark plug out and that's going to make it easier to turn and check and just be a lot safer just in case. So we're good to go here on the blade. So all we got to do, we got to do a few, a few more finishing touches. We got a tire to put on, we got a spark plug to put in, we got a handle to fix and uh, we're just going to give it a good wash and clean it up and uh, it'll be good to go. So we are, we're at the farm, we got about four acres here, so I'm just gonna, no one's here right now, I think they all left early today, but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and put this on the porch, and just left a little note there, let them know it's all ready to go, and that's it, folks. So. You know, there's a lot of satisfaction you can get from fixing something for yourself, getting getting something running that was never running before, or someone had a hard time getting running before, or something like this where you know it's for a great cause, or just a friend who needs something fixed and you just want to handle it for him. So um, hopefully this helped you out quite a bit. So if you want to learn more about small engines and how they work and different applications and really dive into that, I've created a playlist here for you for you to check out. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave those below. And this is Jacob All Trades, and we'll see you next time.